For this week, Arizona rancher George Allen Kelly pleaded not guilty in the alleged killing of an unarmed Mexican citizen. That Mexican citizen killed on his property near the southern border. Kelly claims that he had fired a warning shot because there was a group traveling through his property. The now deceased man was carrying rifles, he claims. He also claims one of the men had pointed a gun at him. His case is now headed for a trial on September 6th, and attorneys on both sides are likely going to try to capitalize on discrepancies made during testimony. Allie Bradley has been following this since the beginning, joins us live in Arizona with the latest on the shooting and the ongoing dangers of the Mexican cartel at the U.S.-Mexico border. Allie. Yeah, hi, Marnie. A lot of discrepancies there that they are going to be looking at in the state right now is arguing that Kelly shot Gabriel Quen Butamea from Mexico in the back on his ranch. But this, the defense here is saying that Kelly shot over their heads and they're maintaining right now that he didn't hit any of them. So let's break down what they found when they were on the ranch. They found eight casings that belong to Kelly's AK-47, one of the ones that he owned. Now, those casings were found near the porch. None were found by Quen Butamea's body which was about 100 yards from the home. The only thing that was reportedly found on Quen Butamea was a radio and tactical boots, but both witnesses that took the stand, they actually claimed that Quen Butamea was wearing a camo backpack and also a waist bag, like a fanny pack, when they were with him. So that's kind of leaving more questions for authorities and more questions about where these backpacks and where these bags went, because the first report said that he was only found with this radio and these boots, Marnie. Now, I did talk with a retired chief deputy of Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Department, and Mario Morales tells me that it is very common practice for these smugglers to ditch any weapons or bags or money or drugs that they do have with them when they're encountered by law enforcement or any other group out there. So that could very well be the case, but they're going to have to determine that. They're going to have to prove that. Now, tomorrow morning, Marnie, we are talking with a rancher out here who has had to live this scene himself. And he's saying right now he is a generational rancher, but Marnie, he says he doesn't feel like he even owns his ranch. He tells me the cartel owns it and they're just allowing him to stay there. Right. And to echo that, Ali, many law enforcement individuals in that area, lawmakers as well, say the cartel is in control of the southern border right now. What are you hearing about the criminal organization's stronghold over communities like the one you're in? Yeah, it's really frustrating to hear people talk about it because there's one answer. If you don't play the cartel, you don't cross. And that's what they're saying down here, Marnie, is that the cartel is in full control of this southern border, specifically here in uh, the Tucson sector where they're leading the nation in gotaways. Those are people that are trying to evade law enforcement. So, you know, when we talk about these different issues right here, they're saying that, they're, that you don't get through without paying. So recently retired uh, chief here, Mario Morales, pinpointing that people work with the cartel is tough. It's hard to figure out who they are. Take a listen to what he had to say when it comes to the people that are smuggling things into our country. They don't give up names or anything like that. It's always somebody they met. Just somebody that they met. That's somebody that they met in Mexico and said, hey, take this with you. Okay, so obviously I poked around the Kelly's house. We walked over to neighbor's houses. The guy that lives directly behind George Allen Kelly, he didn't want to speak on camera, but he gave me some really uh, good insight here, Marnie. He says Border Patrol responded to the Kelly's ranch at least 30 times over the last month. He says that smugglers actually lead people right up to the Kelly's gate. They get out and walk on this, or they, they walk up to that gate. Then vehicles come up on the dirt road right behind this guy's house, pick these people up, and take them further into the interior. And he says he doesn't even feel safe in his backyard. He says he has to feel like he has to be vigilant out there and his daughters won't even come to see him. So that's what they're dealing with out there, which obviously is a big issue for, for these people that are living here. And what is it about this community that it's such a target for so much illegal activity? Yeah, so I mentioned the gotaways. What we are seeing here, this isn't what we see in Yuma. You guys have seen the groups of three to 500 come across self-surrendering to Border Patrol agents. That's not what we're seeing here. As I mentioned, they're leading the nation in gotaways. So those are people that are trying not to get caught for various reasons. They might have criminal history. They might have be, be kicked back under Title 42. So things like that are very viable reasons for these people to be evading. But the criminal history is what they're saying is more likely out here. So what they're dealing with right now in, in the... Uh, in this sector, as I mentioned. I mean, this is one of those areas. Earlier today, we were out here, Marnie. I think he can actually zoom in a little bit. Jim, can you show up in that ridge up there? So Marnie, this area up here, every single morning, 
There are smugglers. You can see one up there. He's up there to the right of the, of the tower. That's a smuggler. They'll be using binoculars and they literally stand up there and watch border patrols every single move. And they, they literally will send bait migrants down here so that they occupy border patrol. And then they'll actually send a group down carrying whatever they want down through the canyon. But take a listen to what Mario Morales had to say about that. Why is this area dangerous or why would you say it is? Because everything north of it is where they want to go. That's my simplest uh, answer. Okay. So Okay, so we know that a lot of the drugs are coming through the ports of entry. We know that this port that's right next to me, I'm here near uh, the Nogales port of entry. We know that more than 23 million fentanyl pills have already been seized here since October. But what Morales is saying is they are seeing more people come in with drugs as well. And when those drugs get into the interior, they end up in stash houses, Marnie, along the border. And the reason we're getting so much fentanyl in the interior is because they're able to go into those stash houses, take smaller increments of this fentanyl, and then bring it into the interior. So they're not car carrying those huge packs full of fentanyl into the interior. They're carrying that to the stash houses along the border. Wow, eye-opening. Allie Bradley, as always, thank you for that report. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.